This is our second episode of our SFP family podcast slash raw tacos, tacos, <laughs> raw tacos, because it's raw and uncut and we talk. So it's raw tacos. And we're supposed to be eating raw tacos as we talk rawly about things. But- rawly. <laughs> it's a word. <laughs> Raleigh, it's a word. <laughs> okay. So before we get anything started, would you like to pray? Hey, I, I closed last time. Okay, I'll pray. <laughs> okay. Our Father in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for giving us this opportunity to talk and to do an, another episode of this podcast. We hope and pray, Father, that this will. Uh, be a blessing to those who are viewers, Father, of this ministry. So please be with us now, Father. Guide us in a conversation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start asking the audience to give you um, questions to ask me or topics to bring up. Okay. Um, but um, what about today? We can read the Natural uh, Remedies Encyclopedia. Um, I have high blood pressure. I'm not sure if you still do. Maybe not. But then then that's a testimony that the natural remedies that we've been doing, and not only that, but eating raw, um, and less table salt, less um, what do you call processed foods? Processed foods, fatty foods, less fatty foods, and less um takeout. Fried foods, I mean, there's fatty foods that are good for you, mm. like walnuts and avocados, avocados, pork. No, not pork. Oh, okay, <laughs> but they're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon. Yeah, not those. Okay, but the. Uh, Good fats is fine, but not the fried foods. What's a good fat? Avocado. I think like 165, 5'7". Five, <laughs> is that what you are? I'm 160. Something like that. 5'7". Yeah. That's I don't a, know. I'm not even... Okay, let's not talk about that. <laughs> but a good fats would be like avocados. Avocado grease. Uh, avocado. No. <laughs> <laughs> avocados, babe. <laughs> Avocados, um, nuts and seeds. nuts. Would you say coconut oil? No. Yeah. No. No. We we should get our fats in their natural natural state. Yeah. Okay. Not processed. Okay. And so, I have high blood pressure. We went to the Ministry of Health, uh, not because of my high blood pressure, but because you were there to study for three months and while we were there um something happened and it spiked my blood pressure and i think it was processed food that we ate before we went to the -hmm. ministry of health yeah we went to the native foods Mm -hmm. which is a vegan a vegan restaurant but at the at the time we weren't really counting we weren't really paying attention to sodium and foods we just went there because it's vegan, you know, and I think that's a mistake. A lot of health conscious people or people that are trying to be more health conscious do is that they'll see that something is vegan and they just jump on it and they want to eat it. And they don't really realize that a lot of these so-called vegan foods are heavily processed and they're loaded with sodium in order to make up for the taste taste. Mm -hmm. they're trying to mimic a meat taste and so they'll just fill it with so much chemicals and sodium to mimic meat and sometimes i think that it can be even more detrimental than actually eating meat Mm. yeah and i think um that's what happened to me we were even though we were already vegan plant-based we were still eating processed foods um especially the burger that i ate Mm -hmm. Uh, remember when i when i tasted it and i was like wait a minute this doesn't taste 
I mean, it tasted good, but it was it was like loaded with salt okay. yeah. and sodium, and so that jumped my and and not only that, but probably white table salt and not like um, Himalayan pink salt or Celtic salt. And by the way, Himalayan pink salt. There's also. Did you hear about the Himalayan pink salt thing? There's like. Mercury. There's mercury and aluminum or something, something like that. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, and so not so for the plant-based people out there, they think that they're gonna, you know, they're gonna go to a restaurant and they're gonna, um, they're going to eat uh, foods that is like meat. This, these are transitional, you would say, mm-hmm. um, even though it's it's a good way to transition from meat eating to plant-based. Is it a good way? I don't think it's a, even a good way. <laughs> I mean, there is, it's because it's kind of hard to go from eating meat mm-hmm. to then eating foods yeah. that are trying to be meat, but, you know, they're not. And so people then choose to do the transitional foods in order to just at least cut back from the meat. Yeah. They still want the taste, but they just don't want to keep, you know hurting animals or eating the meat Mm -hmm. but they still want the food that tastes like meat and so they'll eat those foods but yeah and the transitional foods are so most well i would say even most of them would be more unhealthy than the actual meat it seems like it because if you if for the people that at least try to do a better meat alternate. I mean, a better meat option like organic, pasture, um, organic, pasture, grass fed meat compared to the fake meats that are out in the market now. Yeah. It seems like the organic meat would be healthier because, and, and we started to notice this when. All these restaurants started to sell these fake um, meats, mm. like the Beyond Beef and the Impossible Whoppers, Impossible Sliders at White Castle. Ooh, <laughs> that's that was our first date, by the way. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> that first date was whack. It was White Castle. We, we took her to White Castle, not because. It was- <laughs> oh, you didn't want people to know. <laughs> That wasn't our first date. It was, but I loved it because I grew up loving White Castle. So him inviting me there, I was happy. That wasn't supposed to be our first date. I I only took you there because I remember that you were plant-based and you told me and I told you, hey, I'm plant-based too. But there's this... Uh, uh, this new impossible burger that they have at White Castle. Do you want to go with me? But it wasn't yes. supposed to be. Yeah, you said yes, but it wasn't supposed to be a first date. That's just me wanting to get you food. Oh, so you didn't I guess that's a date. The first date. I think our first date would be would be when we went to the um, the tanks to the tanks. I think that would be the first date, and then the, the the other dates after that is when we would go to the park and things like that. Those are I count those as dates and laughing. And laughing, but I think, well, your laughing is just laughing. But we laugh and we laugh in our dates. But I think the the White Castle thing is just for me to give you something that I thought you would enjoy. But yeah. I guess that's a first date. Well, yeah, you didn't have to do that. Wow, <laughs> you wanted to spend our first time date with was whack. <laughs> it was White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we started eating processed food on our first date. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so the point is that for those of you guys who are transitioning to... Um, There's better alternatives. Like, instead of just going straight to the fake meats, which it's understandable because you still is. want that uh, taste. Yeah. But there then, are healthier options. Like, instead of doing the chemical fake blood meats, they do have, like, black bean burgers or... Ooh. Like bean burgers. But it's not going to be something that people want to eat, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I transitioned th- with th- those fake meats. There are black bean burgers that are good. Yeah, but for someone that comes from eating meats and 
things like that, they're going to want something that comes really close to it. Yeah, but then if you're, if you're wanting to transition from meat eating to plant-based, but you're going to eat something that tastes like meat, might as well just eat the meat. Well, I get it because when I started learning about, um, well, I started feeling bad about how animals are treated. Mm -hmm. That's how it started for me. I, I watched some documentaries on how they would treat like the cows and the chickens. Yeah. I didn't want to be a part of that anymore. And so I told myself I didn't want to eat animals anymore, but I still liked the taste. And so I was happy that they had like <laughs> fake ribs. And um, I don't want to kill animals, but I like the taste of animals. <laughs> so I'm going to eat this fake McRibs. Well, actually, it's not even that because if you, no one rarely, I mean, people rarely would eat an animal unless it had seasoning. What people really miss is the, the seasoning. Taste. Oh, the seasoning. Yeah, because ribs without the seasoning, I'm pretty sure it doesn't taste it just that way. Tastes plain. Without the barbecue sauce, yeah. It's just flesh, you know? What people miss is that is the spices and seasonings and sauces Ooh. that went on the meat. And so that's why they're able to replicate these fake meats because they add all those things on it. Mm. And so... I remember my grandma would fry chicken. <laughs> fry chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not like fried, like breaded fried chicken. But she would fry it in a pan. Um, uh, and... Um, uh, the way that she made it taste good was she just put salt, mm. and the salt made it taste good, and that's why I like chicken. But it, but if you wash the chicken and you just ate, just like that, it just tastes like cardboard. Ew. Yeah. Mm. So, plus you're eating chicken. This chicken used to be alive, and you're eating it. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, with me, I I I did use. The fake meats to transition, but it should just be that. It should be a transitional food because we know that they're not the healthiest either. Mm. And once you're able to be fully convicted about the health message, then you start to let go of these fake alternatives and you start going more into the real whole food plant-based options. And then you learn how to create, you know, black bean burgers instead of having the fake meat and instead of having the actual meat you do burgers with actual food Whole no food. chemicals you use you know your legumes and your grain and you make a patty and it and vegetables and you go it's it's a process and it's understandable that people can't just go straight from eating meats to whole foods it's mm. not easy for everyone but you know at least they're it's baby steps mm -hmm. and each step towards doing better for yourself is commendable mm. so um so you would say that eating meat um and then from meat you say Okay, I don't want to eat meat anymore. I want to, I want to, you know, I don't want to eat this burger anymore. It's processed. I don't want to eat this anymore because it's chicken and, you know, there's still, uh, you know, you, you still got to put sodium or salt in it just to make it taste good. Or I don't want to eat this anymore because of the fat and all these things that, and it still has blood or whatever. You know how they cook their steaks? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't get how they cook, they cook their steaks and then the, 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 you know, the thing still has, the meat still has the blood. So you're eating the blood. Apparently, people, so, people are saying that it's not blood. I don't know. I, whatever. The rare, medium rare, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I'm Filipino. We eat things when it's brown, <laughs> you know. So, so we, so from there, and then you transition. The transitional part is the, um, like, um, Impossible burgers, beyond beef, and all these things. The chicken wings. The, and the non-chicken wings. Mm, chicken uh, nuggets. The chick, the chick nuggets. Chicks mm. nuggets. Right? <laughs> but these things are still... <laughs> what? <laughs> chicks, isn't it? Isn't it called? Oh, you said C chicks nuggets. <laughs> isn't, isn't that what it's called? C-H-I-X? 
Chicks. <laughs> yeah, when you said chicks nuggets. <laughs> That's what it's called. Chicks nuggets. <laughs> Morning star. Chicks nuggets. <laughs> Don't add that to them. Anyways, but these still these things like you're getting away from the processed foods here, the meat, but then you go to the transitional foods and those are still processed. Yeah. Do you know the chemicals that are in them? Do you know? Because I don't know. But do you know what chemicals they use? Because I remember you showing me um, the back of the, like the labels uh, in this, uh, in these, uh, I think it was Morningstar or whatever. Mm. And you were showing me the label or the ingredients. And you said, this is a lot of ingredients. Mm. And some of those ingredients you can't even pronounce. And you don't even know what they are. And you, you don't know what they are. Them up. And if you, when you do look them up, I think you looked some up, and some of those things are not like they're not good. Yeah, a lot of them are not are not meant. They're not fit for human consumption, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that we want to express that God gave us a diet, and when we put anything into our bodies that isn't intended to be in there, it's going to cause havoc and. The foods that we were meant to eat, it's clearly it, it's clearly stated in Genesis. We were given fruits and vegetables and greens. And these chemicals are not meant to be in our bodies. Mm. And so if people are having a hard time giving up the meat taste and, and things like that, that's why we, we say that the transitional foods are meant to be just that they can't continue to be part of your everyday diet mm. there there has to come to there there has to come a point where you, you start letting go of, of those yeah. and move towards the foods that we were given mm. and those are whole foods whole greens. foods vegetables and eating them in their most simplistic form Simplified. a lot of a lot of people overcomplicate food food it doesn't have to be that complicated and it doesn't have to be that stressful simply Mm. steaming your vegetables and a nice little salad here and vegetables and your grain simple we don't have to make these huge um fancy casseroles that create all these dishes on the sink and now you're stressing out it god didn't design for food to be that difficult it's Mm. really simple and you get that example in the the story of um daniel they just ate pulse pulse and they they were sustained pulse are what is it grains fruits vegetables is that it and nuts those are pulse that's pulse right and so they had a simple diet and Got it. So meat eating and then the transitional food and then into the whole foods, right? Mm-hmm. The transitional food is still processed food. So when you're, when you're, you're when you're, so it's, it's like Christianity. With Christianity, yes, you, you go from living in the world, right? You're, you're consuming things with your eyes or with your ears or even with your, with your mouth, things from the world that the world is offering to you. But then now you become a Christian. You're, you're now transitioning from that to now watching sermons and, you know, you go to service and you get your, your Bible from, you, you know, your, your doctrine from there. But still, that's still processed food. Mm-hmm. So that's, so, so now you got to go to the whole foods and now you got to read the Bible yourself mm-hmm. and so that you can gain, uh, or you can have, um, um, a deeper relationship with God. Mm-hmm. By that. The source. The source, yeah. by the source. So God gave us a source, and in Genesis, he gave us, he said, out of all the trees, uh, you know, here in the garden, you can freely eat except for one, for one tree. So God restricts one tree, but out of all the other, everything else, you know, the trees, um, uh, the fruit, fruit-bearing fruit trees with, I mean, seed-bearing fruits that come from the trees and uh, vegetables, nuts, grains, all these things. That's what God gave to us as whole foods that are, you know, th- that's what God prescribed to us. He didn't, he didn't prescribe um, burgers. 
and trans transition. It even prescribe transitional foods from meat to um to whole foods. Because remember what happened. What happened when when God took the Israelites out of Egypt? Where where did He in take the wilderness. in the wilderness? So what is that called? He took them out of the the what? He took them out of the not not only Egypt, but he also took them out of the foods, the flesh pots, the flesh pots of Egypt, the lusts. Mm -hmm. And so he took them out of the flesh pots of Egypt, and he quarantined them in the wilderness, and he gave them the food, and that food was manna, and not only the not only the manna, but he also gave them water, not soda, mm -hmm. not uh, uh, you know other 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 things that you put in your in energy your body, drinks. energy drinks, monsters, Red Bull. Not that water and manna, bread, bread from heaven, and so he gave us he gave us our foods, and those are the foods that we should be eating. We shouldn't be eating foods that the world would give us. Yeah, and for health, we have to work alongside God. If He gave us a specific diet, we can't just be eating whatever. And then when we get sick, we're praying for God to heal us, but we're mm. we're the ones corrupting our bodies as well. We're eating these foods that we think are healthy but check the ingredients mm. these things don't belong in the body these things were not in the garden mm. so then why are we putting them in our in our in our bodies we're supposed to be taking care of of, of our vessels it doesn't matter how good that looks it's not good for you whether you eat or you drink you do all to the glory of God. So we shouldn't be putting things in our body that doesn't glorify God. And a lot of people twist that um uh that that verse to mean that we can eat you know this we can eat pork, we can eat shrimps now as long as we glorify God, but then but the actual verse means that you eat things that would glorify God. So that means no shrimp, no hot dogs, uh, pork, and no other, you know, mice or, and other things. Mice. Like, yeah, mice and snakes, like things like that. No, none of those. Um, you only eat things that glorify God. God didn't change our bodies mm -hmm. when, you know, for the people that say, no, we could eat all these things. God didn't change our bodies all of a sudden for us, for our bodies to be able to withstand foods that don't, or things that don't go in our bodies mm. our bodies are designed a specific way to benefit from specific foods and anything else is going to damage it mm -hmm. and yeah and god created everything right so god created the plants god created the fruits the vegetables and the grains and all these things and god also created like chicken and beef uh, you know, all these animals. Um, and so he knows the chemical makeup of, I mean, like, not the chemical, but the, 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 the deep, well, what do you call it? Like the makeup of all these meats and all these fruits and vegetables. So, and he also made us, right? So he knows what our body needs because he's the one that created our bodies. And he created this specific fruit for a, a certain thing in your body. He created this specific um, grain for a certain thing in your body. But then he also allowed, you know, sometime in the past, he also allowed like chicken and beef. And there's a reason why he only allowed certain animals to be eaten. He didn't, that, that wasn't his um, original plan. He allowed it. Um, because he knows that the the whatever makeup it is, the, the DNA makeup or the meat, the makeup of the meat, he 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 knew that okay, may, the body can take that, but that's not the original. But it it was even supposed to be cooked a specific way too, right? Which a lot of people are not doing that, right? No blood, no blood, and so a lot of that's why I say like the steak when they cook the steak and you see the blood, that's to me that's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting to me. But how does this um, <laughs> affect my blood pressure now? Well, because we 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 got carried away with mm -hmm. this is vegan that we didn't really think anything else about it. We we're like, oh, it's vegan. Okay, I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. But so so the, like let's say eating meat and stuff. What causes the blood pressure? N not just the um. The table salt, the white table salt, um, but also what else? Like with gr the grease that comes from the meat. The meat. 
that would cause a clog, a cloggage. Is that a word? Clog. It clogs the the arteries. The arteries, right? With the, the and also the cholesterol in the meat mm. and the grease from the meats. Mm-hmm. It's also because our our systems aren't meant to be digesting meat flesh. Mm. Our our bodies are not the same as say a lion or a tiger. They their bodies I'm trying to remember if we I think they can digest faster than us. And so they can process the meat that they eat, but with us, it stays there and it causes constipation because meat Mm. doesn't have fiber. Fruits and vegetables have the fiber. And so it can get pushed out. Meat doesn't have fiber. I didn't didn't know that. That's why a lot of people that are heavy meat eaters, they get colon cancer. Oh, wow. It's a cause of it because they're clogging their intestines i didn't know that and then add to that the fact that a lot of people don't drink their water you know they're they're not following the health laws so for for people that are meat are heavy meat eaters and are clogged you know internally um what would you recommend uh well okay so we're not doctors yeah we're not doctors um, but we are certified medical missionary um, still in training. Still in training. I'm st- we're still learning. Yeah. We're all course. learning together. Like even the audience, mm-hmm. we're all learning with you too. And if you guys are saying anything in the comments, we're also going to learn from it. We're all learning from each other. This is what we're sharing now are things that we've experienced um, with other people that we've come across or things that we've researched, but we're not professionals at all. No, we're not professionals. We are, even though we're, we have our certification, um, but we're still learning. We're still babies. We're still babies. And so for the people that have the clogged, you know, intestines and they have meat there that, you know, so what would be, how would, how would they be able to sweep all that out so that they can. Like a reset. Reset and they can take all that out of their body. Well, usually a fast helps people Mm -hmm. so that, um, because you don't want to keep loading your body with so much if you're already constipated and clogged. So you do a liquid fast to help push everything out, maybe doing like some green juices, Mm -hmm. um, but no more eating, allow the body to just eliminate. Some people do enemas where they cleanse their intestines. Um you know, juices, fasts, and that usually helps to remove yeah. waste from the system. And you don't want to keep taxing it with so much stuff. So, and then usually just cutting out the meats that are causing constipation. Because the beauty of the foods that God gave us is that he put the fiber in the fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. and our bodies are able to with the with the fiber in them, they can be expelled from from the system. But with the meats, they don't have the fiber, and so they get stuck there. Apples have a lot of fiber. <laughs> I've experienced that. <laughs> I ate two or three apples <laughs> in the morning one day. You can tell they have fiber. You can tell, and your stomach starts grumbling, and then you go to the washroom, and then voila. But if you if you guys want to flush yourself, if you guys want to flush yourself the way that we uh, we we did it, because I I was also uh, in this state of constipation. Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks. That uh, was like three weeks ago, right? Three or four weeks ago, um, and it was because we were transi- transitioning from bottled water to distilled water, and I was getting trying to get used i i haven't gotten used to the distilled water then um and so i didn't you know because because usually i'll go in there to get a bottle of water and i just drink it like that but with the since there's no more bottled waters um and there's the distiller right there um it 
it took a while for me to get used to getting the distilled water and putting it in a glass like this and uh, drinking it. So I was also dehydrated. And because I was dehydrated, I wasn't getting enough water in my system. It caused a cloggage <laughs> in the down there mix up, <laughs> in the downstairs mix up there. <laughs> and um, I got uh, constipations. Really bad constipations. Really, yeah, bad, really bad constama patients and so what we did is we warmed up some you know some water and then we had how many how, how much salt did you put like celtic salt i think it was a teaspoon a teaspoon of celtic salt it was a glass like this right so maybe a little bit over half and then a teaspoon of water and as the water has to be warm you drink it you drink it within the on an empty stomach on an empty stomach within five was it five minutes Really it's got to be really fast, right? Inside of five minutes. So you drink it really fast. And then about five to 10 minutes later, your stomach start, starts to grumble. And then you go in there and splash. It just <laughs> comes out. So. <laughs> That's very graphic. <laughs> <laughs> it does what it did. It just splashed. <laughs> and it comes out. And all of a sudden, you need to, you know, you need to wipe certain things. <laughs> So, yeah. So. Don't do it again. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. I'm going to drink my water this time around. So you're trying to do a demonstration. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is, this is just regular water. <laughs> but, yeah. So, we were talking about high blood pressure. So, the way to, um, you know, with the, you know, we need to eliminate the grease as well, eliminate the oils. We haven't really been cooking with oils. Um, we used to cook at with all. at all. Yeah. We, we used to cook with olive oil. We, we were thinking, you know, that's the best oil. Grape, yeah. But then we found out you're not supposed to heat olive oil because it could be carcinogenic after a certain period of time right when you heat it after a certain you can't heat it over a certain temperature yeah and so we don't use um oils anymore we used to use grapeseed oil as well because it could withstand higher yeah. temperatures but then i don't know i think it, there's there's exactly what we need okay so what were we saying about transitional foods well, there's there's also a lot of, uh, I hear a lot of people say that, oh, a little bit's not going to hurt me. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just a little bit of this, a little dessert here, a little uh, this there. But then I get taken to the Bible verse that says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Mm. Where even if it's just a little bit, it can still cause issues and even if it didn't why would we want to put things into our bodies that wasn't created to be put in our bodies mm -hmm. just for taste just for a little bit of satisfaction just, um you know uh what do you call gratification just yeah, for that one a time. temporary feeling a fleeting moment that's just gonna pass you know why why do that to yourself? Mm. Why do that to the body that, you know, you, you were bought with a price and God bought you. We should honor our bodies. I think people are addicted to the taste of those things. Because I, I can only imagine like myself, there are certain foods that I still can't get rid of. Like, um, like what would, you, what would you say? Like um, You got rid of chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah. But there are other there are other foods. Rice. Rice. Yeah. I mean, babe. <laughs> Did I say more? Look at my eyes. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm from the Pacific's. I'm the <laughs> Pacific Islander. I'm from there, so it's it's ingrained in me. Pun intended. <sighs> Pun intended. I'm Puerto Rican. Yeah. So you used to eat pork. That's racist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So yeah, rice. Well, they're probably thinking, "Well, what's wrong with the rice? Can you can you explain to us what is wrong with the rice? Oh, boy. White rice, 
brown rice, and what's the best rice? Starch. That's what's wrong with oh, it. Starch. starch. No, I'm just kidding. Um. But well, yeah. There's you well, get starch issues, don't you? Well, yeah. The the starch would be the main issue, and it's empty carbs. If you're going to have carbs, you should eat something that's going to actually benefit you. Rice, white rice, it barely has any type of n- nutrition in it, mm. and you're just eating carbs mm. with no benefit. Basically, that's what you know is said about it. And starch yeah, could-, could cause digestive issues as well. And so there are healthier alternatives if you want a rice like food there's quinoa there's Mm. wild rice wild rice is my favorite yeah and we just discovered barley oh barley oh yeah barley Mm, maybe we should we should um cook barley yeah sometime barley with lentils is pretty good yeah so yeah white rice just going to straight whole foods no um, alternatives is better than nothing. Well, sweet potatoes also are carbs that have benefits. Um, sweet potato would be better than white potatoes. But the white sweet potatoes is my favorite. Yeah. So what is it called? Japanese. Sweet potato. Yeah, Japanese sweet potatoes. Yeah, that's my favorite sweet potatoes. So if you guys want some carbs that are not empty, like white rice, like some of you Filipinos out there, <laughs> kababayan, um, white rice is all we eat. Sometimes I remember the days where we were so poor that we would eat white rice with a little bit of oil and salt. That's what we would eat because white rice grew in our backyard. And so, but if you can, you know, black, I mean, a black, uh, yeah, black rice. Um, wild rice. Wild rice. Uh, quinoa. Japanese sweet potatoes. My favorite sweet potato. Um, what else? Barley would be great. And there was other one. There was another one, but I forgot what it was. And so, what has this got to do with the uh, high blood pressure? <laughs> well, we, we keep going back to the high blood pressure because I have high blood pressure. So... What foods should we eat? Like, should I eat? Um, if I have, and I still do have high blood pressure sometimes, uh, what foods should I eat? Or what foods should I eliminate? Oily foods, I know that. Like oily, salty foods. No table salt, no white salt. Um, and I already know, I, I already know what you're going to recommend. Raw. <laughs> Go raw. Um, I think going raw would be because I felt the best. I think when we were like that one that one week, I think or three days that I was completely raw and I didn't eat anything cooked, even though it was very tempting because you guys were eating cooked foods. Um, so I think I felt the best. Um, raw. I didn't feel any high blood pressure or anything like that. Yeah, and I th- I think me too. Now, if, when we when we went raw for a few days, going back to cook completely food, raw. Yeah, going back mm-hmm. to cook foods feels n- even that feels bad now. Even if, even mm-hmm. if you're eating whole food, cooked foods, healthy cook cooked foods, even that felt a little heavy. You can see that you can feel the difference. Yeah. You feel slower, uh, sluggish, sluggish, and you would have never known because you're so used to feeling a certain way. Like with me, I've had digestive issues, especially after having um, Elisha and Jonathan. And for some reason, I can't process foods easily like I used to. And so, Something like lentils will give me bad uh, gas. Explosive. <laughs> gas and bloating. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't say explosive. Yeah. Very, very bad stomach issues. And, you know, and that's not the worst food ever. And mm. Or 
But would you say after going raw? I don't. I don't experience it at all. And so there's no then, dynamite. I thought that in the. I thought that the no. <laughs> I thought that my stomach issues was just something that I just had to deal with, you know. Mm. And I didn't know that I could feel better. Mm. Mm. And when we went raw, I wasn't feeling that way anymore. I can eat food and not feel discomfort. And I didn't think that there was a way that, or I didn't think that you can feel better. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. I think when we were raw that one time, I mean, we're still. Like, I thought, I thought we were healthy. Did you hear that? Yeah, downstairs. I I thought we were healthy, you know, with the alkaline diet and things like that. But then going raw, it's like a whole nother level of. Yeah. You you didn't know your body can feel that good. And then going back to including some foods again, it's kind of like, uh, like do well, we have to? <laughs> well, some, sometimes it, it can be hard because eating raw, you got to eat a lot of... You have to a, a eat lot, way yeah. more. Than, yeah. Than yeah, you food. have to eat way more than... Oops, I should be this way. Yeah, you have to eat way more than uh, the usual because when you're eating raw, it doesn't really, well, it, it feels like it doesn't fill you up, but it really, it, it, it actually does. It just but you're so used to quicker. Yeah, and you're so used to the cooked foods. The that, heavier meals. Yeah, the, the, the heavier meals make you feel like you're full, mm-hmm. but that's why you're like, when you eat raw and it's not as heavy, you don't feel full. Um, but you just have to eat more. Yeah, more more portion. Um, but yeah, so eating raw, I think that's the best I felt um, um, when it when it comes to my blood pressure. I, re- I remember when we were over here, we were even surprised when we checked my blood pressure. Remember, and we were surprised that um, um, that the blood pressure was I, I forgot what it was like one eighteen to one eighteen by. 90 or 80 or something like that um usually my blood pressure is like 130 over 95 or huh 140 140 over 100 100. or something like that Mm -hmm. and which is not good um but eating raw eliminating the the you know the fried foods eliminating the oils take out processed foods and things like that um and i even think that eating raw helped my Allergies. Allergies as well. Yeah, you're, I think that's one of the biggest things I noticed that this year you barely had any symptoms. Yeah. Whereas before, every single every beginning like month. of the year, <laughs> you were sneezing and stuffy yeah. and, oh, my head. Oh, I can't <laughs> work. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> I wasn't like that. that that's an exaggeration. <laughs> It's I not. usually, I, I'm Same. usually a man about everything. <laughs> I'm a strong. You would be on the couch. Strong individual. <laughs> I was not on the couch, laying down <laughs> with no with low energy. That is not true. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. Well, all men have this thing when the when they're when they're um, sick. sick they exaggerate it, okay? <laughs> and you're a man. Yeah. <laughs> so that's 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 what happened there. I'm looking for high blood pressure. Um, I think it was page or hypertension. I think that's what it was. Um, so that we can see what this book says about hypertension. But basically, a raw diet will do the trick. Um, I'm just cutting back on things that are causing your blood pressure to skyrocket. Also, probably even doing a detox because with you, mm. you, before becoming a Christian, you were doing a lot of unhealthy things. Yeah, I did. Um, I was eating like McDonald's. I was eating. Oh, my favorite was uh, Wendy's. Almost every day. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Well, Taco Bell wasn't my favorite. When you, when when they had like a free, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> free tacos because uh, someone hit a home run. Like one of the 
I think it was Cubs or whatever. Someone um, hit a home run. The Chicago baseball team. Yeah. And they and to celebrate, they started selling free tacos at Taco Bell. And mm-hmm. you did this thing where you were going to every single Taco Bell. Around the city. And you and were ordering food. and For free. How, how many do you think you went to? I think we went to three or four. And we ordered, I think it was two tacos each. So I, I get two tacos and my guy got two tacos. So we had like, so four times two. Eight. Carry the six. Yeah, eight. <laughs> so four, So I had eight tacos that day. Hard shell tacos. Meat? Yeah. Ground beef? Yeah, ground beef. Um, cheese. So, oh yeah, cheese also. Doesn't that contribute also to high blood pressure? It can, yeah, because it's usually full of salt. Okay, so let's read this real quick. So this is from the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. This is what, you know, our go-to book when it comes to health and diseases and things like that. Hypertension, high blood pressure. Symptoms, there are many, there may be no symptoms, but if they occur, they may include headache, which I do, I do get. Mm-hmm. Difficulty in breathing, blurred vision. I do get that too. Blurred, vi- blurred vision sometimes. Still? Sometimes. Um, rapid pulse. I think I, yeah, I, I, I do get that. A feeling of dizziness sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes there, there was even a time, remember, where I felt like my equilibrium was off. Mm-hmm. Um, you thought you had vertigo? Vertigo, I think, yeah. Overweight, a ruddy, ruddy, ruddy complexion, and apparently robust health may be the only outward manifestation in one man 50 or 60, or in a man 50 or 60 who may have systolic, is that how you say it? Systolic. Systolic pressure as high as 200 or more. Systolic Mm -hmm. is the bottom, right? Um, Or is that uh, diastolic? I I get confused still. No, because if it's diastolic, if it's the bottom number, that you probably die after that. No, I think this is the the high the um yeah the top number. Hypertension is called the silent killer because it r- rarely reveals early symptoms. So we really got got to watch out for hypertension. So here are the causes. I'll just I'll, I'll um uh, I'll read some. It says, okay, I could, I could go here. The hardening and clogging pro, um, produce changes in the arteries resulting in hypertension that is caused by aging, emotional stress, food, overeating, and heredity. Tobacco is another cause of hypertension as it is the taking of oral contra- contraceptives, drinking coffee or tea, drug abuse, and high sodium intake. Are other causes? Were you going to say something? Um, here, okay. So here's here's the diet. So this is what um, our uh, what's what's name Barbara O'Neill um, recommended: distilled water. Okay, only drink distilled water. Another quote from Doctor Whitaker: Drink 15 glasses of water a day. Almost all the blood pressure medications mimic the effects of increased water intake. They usually do that by thinking or thinning the blood, but you don't want to thin the blood. You wanna you want to do it naturally, like eating or drinking water. Um, drink water, and it will do it naturally. See right there: high fiber diet or vegetables, fruits, nuts, whole grains. Oat bran, flaxseed oil, two tablespoons a day. Flaxseed. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. Flaxseed oil. So here are some of the uh, natural remedies, and, it's, and you know, we've got more natural remedies here. Nutrition, uh, nutrition here, and here's the herbs. This is what I used to take when I had um, high blood pressure. Hawthorn berry. Um, uh, uh, the pills. I think I, I took like four of those. Like four every or three times a day, mm-hmm. four. And what was the other ones that we were we were doing? Cayenne, garlic, olive Cayenne, leaf. Garlic, yeah, olive leaf. So those are um, some good herbs, herbal pills that you guys can take. <coughs> and um, some other things here. So this is the book 
for those of you guys who want to who want to get this book the natural remedies encyclopedia this is where we uh, can find all of the uh, the diseases or the ailments that we have and we can find the natural remedies there it's a lifestyle change it is and that's the good thing about it is that you're trying to find the root solution to your ailments instead of just continuing to mask it with mm-hmm. medication because for a lot of these things you're going to continue to do medication for almost all your life if you don't change the life your if you don't change what it is that's causing the issues and yeah. it's usually a lifestyle change that will do it it'll yeah. you'll be able to um What's that word I'm looking for? Not reverse or okay, reverse. Um, yeah, reverse the damage by eating the foods that'll help repair. And well, the the foods help your body to repair because your body is the one that's doing the repairing. Mm-hmm. The foods is the foods are aiding you, your body yeah. to repair that. And so if we're eating foods that are that are not aiding the body to repair itself, then you know we're we're we're, we're we we ourselves are the ones causing the disease it's anyway sabotaging yeah we're sabota- sabotaging the body and so th- these you guys can find again at s f p dot center the natural remedies encyclopedia we do got we we have um packages uh of this as well, so you guys can get this. In the description box below, the link is in the description box below. We recommend these things because we have seen that a complete lifestyle change is what more than not does help people get better. Mm -hmm. People could do medications, but from what we've experienced, you'd, you'd have to continue doing it. For a long time, for almost all your life, and you're gonna be dependent on medication unless you change your diet, you start taking better care of yourself, um, follow the laws of health, follow the laws that God gave, not put anything in your body that's going to continue to destroy it. But instead, putting life-giving foods into your body that's going to help repair and sustain it, just like the tree of life. God gave us fruits that are life-giving and and vegetables and foods, a specific diet that's meant to sustain and build up our bodies. Mm -hmm. And you can see it all around. He put different plants and herbs. You see all the dandelions now that it's spring blooming and these foods god placed for us to to keep us healthy Mm -hmm. and aid us to being well as well as the sun the fresh air exercise exercising expelling the toxins through our pores through our skin and sweating it out god gave us the perfect System. System. We just have to aid Mm -hmm. it by giving it the proper things that it needs. Like a baby. We take care of it. We give him what he needs and he grows and he's healthy. We have to do the same with ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, we're kind of like a, so we're like, our body's like a system. So it's kind of like a car. So if you have a gas engine car, you don't want to put diesel in your gas engine car because you're going to damage your car, you're going to damage the engine. You want to put what's supposed to be in it, right? You want to put what's supposed to be in the car, in the gas engine engine car. So you put gas in the car so that your engine would run. And how much more valuable are we than cars? Exactly. We'd want to take care of it more than a car. But people take better care of their cars than themselves. And they do their bodies. But babe... Yes. Jesus Christ said that we can eat whatever now. <laughs> Where? In Matthew, it says, it's not about what you eat that defiles you, your body. It's about what's in your heart that defiles you. <laughs> Let's go there. 
Oh, <laughs> we can go there. I don't have my phone. My phone is over there. But I think it's in Matthew. I forgot where it is, where it is in Matthew. But basically, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the the washing of the of your hands. Let's go there. But I, it's I forgot. Can you give me my phone? Because I forgot where. I have a where it is. It's in Matthew. Matthew. If if it if it wasn't about what we ate that defiles us, then why is it that when we eat bad things, we get defiled and we get sick? See, that's another thing because a lot of people point at that scripture and they say, "Hey, Jesus said that um, whatever you can you can eat whatever now. Well, try eating whatever, right? That whatever can be human flesh. Try eating human flesh or try eating poison. It's gonna it's gonna mess with your body." It's going to mess with your body. So obviously Jesus didn't mean um, like, didn't mean it that way. The way that he mean that the way that he meant it is whatever you eat, it's not about what you eat. It's about your heart. So if you change your heart, then you're not going to eat the thing that God told you not to eat. It's a heart problem. It's a heart issue. It's not a, it's not a, like when, when, when Adam and Eve, when Eve ate the fruit, it's not the eating the fruit that was the sin. It like, yeah, that's the magical powers or right. whatever that. Yeah, the the fruit is just a regular fruit. It's the it's a heart condition. She believed in the um, in the lie of Satan, and that was the thing. That was the sin. The disobedience. Yeah, the, the disobedience to God's law or God's uh, commandment not to eat the fruit. That was the thing that defiled her, and so because she was defiled, the result was she. Went and t- took the fruit that she wasn't she wasn't supposed to eat, and and she ate it. So what she, how she was on the inside, it by her works you could tell if she really had a relationship with God or not. Mm-hmm. It was a heart condition. She yeah. didn't believe what God said, and therefore that's why she disobeyed. Yeah. So she believed the lie that Satan gave her um, that. Jesus, that that God was manipulative, that God was um, lying, that God is just trying to keep her away from what's best for her to eat. And so because she believed that, she's like, okay, so if he's only doing that, then I'm just going to, I'm going to take this fruit and I'm going to eat it. Even though that was a sin to eat the fruit, that was actually the result of the, the deeper sin that was within her heart. And, you know, her mind, she believed something about God that wasn't true. And because she believed that, it her cost actions. her to, yeah, her action showed what she believed. Mm-hmm. And so many people today, their actions show what they believe. You know, they believe that God, that you know, they believe that you can eat whatever now. That God is, you know, um, you know, God has unlocked this thing that, she, that he was taken away from us before. Um, and so, and because of that, God changed, God changed his, uh, his method or his, his health laws. There is no, no more health loss, right? That, that, that's it. And so you eat whatever you want, but we know that if you eat whatever you want, you, something happens to you when you eat whatever you want. Um, we, why, this is the reason why there's a uh, natural remedies encyclopedia, mm-hmm. because we can see that. You can't eat whatever you want because if you do, there's consequences. The body right. reacts. It tries to expel the toxins by creating cancer and tumors and you get flus and colds and sicknesses because there's the body is reacting because there's a foreign substance that's being mm-hmm. put in there and the body's alerting you, hey, there's something going on. Um, change change this yeah. because if you don't, I'm, I'm getting worse. Yeah. If, so, if if God had completely allowed us to eat whatever we want, why are we getting sick? Right. When we're See? putting all these bad foods in our bodies. And then why is it that when we start putting in the right foods in our bodies, we start healing? Yeah. See, and that's what people don't understand. They don't understand that the the food that you eat is what's making you sick. And so Along they think, other things like yeah. environmental issues, emotional issues. Yeah. But the main thing is, is food, the diet, and your life. And so they believe that they can eat whatever, you know. But then they eat that they eat whatever, and it makes them sick, and they don't understand why. Uh, well, God said 
not to eat those things. Jesus Christ said not to eat those things. I mean, what happened with the Israelites in the wilderness? They well, in the wilderness, they asked for the flesh pots of Egypt, and then God gave them flesh. And when they ate the the flesh, they died. They died immediately. They died. It's a, it even says that when the when the meat were when the meat was still in their mouth, they died. And so, yeah. But we can we can do a more um, deeper study on that. I just I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I didn't prepare all the uh, things. But yeah, we can look into like Acts when in I think it's in Acts ten when Peter saw the vision and all that stuff. So. And I just want to apologize in advance if maybe from my side I'm coming across as passionate or like a certain way about mm -hmm. this. The, the the reason why I am is because I have a lot of people that have that are close to me that have gone through a lot of health issues. Yeah. Primarily based on the stuff that they would put into their bodies. And yeah. I experienced firsthand how when we just put the right foods in the bodies and we get rid of those bad those foods that are causing these issues that there's a complete 360, or is it 180? 180. A complete 180 turn transformation. Like mm -hmm. with my dad, he was a diabetic since he was in his 20s. Mm -hmm. He was a high diabetic. And as he was getting older, the, the machine started reading high, H-I. That's what it would say on the machine, which means that it was over a certain amount. And it was dangerous yeah. that level is dangerous like he could get into a coma so usually that was that was a number right but but yeah. your dad's thing it showed that it wasn't even a, a number anymore it just said high it was just it couldn't even read it anymore that's mm. how high it was and he was like that for over 50 years just going through that constantly plus the high blood pressure plus his feet being swollen all the time and this was due to meat eating mm. because we noticed that whenever he would eat especially the red meats his feet would swell up and what i did was you know this was something that i was doing as i was learning about health i learned that with me, I the, I did the change on myself first. I saw the benefits and I thought, well, it wouldn't hurt to try this on him because he's been on medication for over, for over 50 years and it only seems like he's getting worse. Like, why isn't this, why isn't he cured yet? I was getting very frustrated. And so I thought, okay, it, it's not going to hurt to change his diet. And I started giving him plant-based foods. I cut off the meat, I cut off fried foods, I cut off a lot of things, and his numbers started reading normal. He started getting 120, over 80, and then lower and lower and lower because he was still taking insulin. And then after a while, then it was getting low, like very the, low. The blood pressure or the? The blood sugar. Oh, blood sugar. Yeah, it, was, it started being like 70s and I'm like, okay, I might have to start cutting back the insulin because for some, like it's, his, his numbers are being really good. Mm -hmm. And after a while we could cut off the insulin mm -hmm. and take him off metformin and the nurses would come and they would be in shock. They, these are nurses that would come to his home for years. They knew him as someone that was always sick mm -hmm. and always laying in bed and having no energy and they were coming and he was sitting up doing word puzzles smiling and they said i've never seen him so full of energy mm -hmm. we've never seen him with his feet not swollen mm -hmm. and they couldn't believe it and he's not taking his he wasn't taking his insulin no and all because of the change of diet yeah and mm -hmm. someone that's been having this issue for over 50 years wow and so, yeah, so this is the, you know, th these are things that happen when, when the diet is changed, when we change a diet into um, not just a simple diet, but, a, but the diet that God um, prescribed to us a long time ago. Now, there are, there are also different cases out there where they can change their diet and still nothing happens. Um, but, you know, those are special cases and those are, those are cases that we don't know 
you know, God might be allowing those things and we don't know what what those things are about or, or, or why God is allowing that. We don't know. Um, but for the most part, you know, typically when it comes to food and diet and, and health, when you change your diet, when you change the things that you eat and you go with what God has prescribed from the beginning, you, it'll be better for your your system. It'll be better for your body. Um, is what we experience, and I've experienced this myself. I'm a I'm a living testimony of uh, when you change your diet, the you know the ailments, you know the ailments go down and they they stop. And so I'm a, I'm a living testimony for that too. Uh, my yeah. wife is also a living testimony. Um, his dad was a, I mean his her dad was a testimony of that, and uh, we know um, a lot more other people that we've met and you know at the Ministry of Health and. Uh, things like that, where their uh, change of diet has really changed their life. So, yeah, and that's why we we speak about these things because we've experienced a lot of accounts. But yeah, there are there are some people that, for some reason, the diet doesn't isn't doing much, and so for for those people, then we'd have to really get down to okay why you know why is this happening what is there something else that can be done um because for the most part the diet can help but then there's probably other factors too mm. that are contributing to why it's still happening and yeah. so the whole person needs to be examined there's probably something else going on or a lot of times there's environmental factors mm. Um, but the diet is a good start. Yeah. And then from there, well, you, the diet is a great start. <laughs> yeah. It's, and then from there you keep going, you know, like, okay, what, what is the diet doing? How is it helping? What, what else can we incorporate? Does, does it, does the person need more water? Um, are they in an environment where let's say there's like, 5G towers, mm. because that can also affect the person. Are, are, are they in a household that's full of mold exposure? Because mm. those toxins could also affect the person. Mm. And the diet is, is a part of it, but it's not the complete health message. Mm -hmm. There's still other things that need to be yeah. considered. The eight laws. Mm -hmm. the, the, the diet is just one. Yeah, you know the, the the nutrition is just one. There's also water, air, sunlight, exercise, trust in God, temperance, and what's the other one? I I forgot. Which ones did you say? I, okay, so new starts: nutrition, exercise, exercise water, water, sunlight, sunlight temperance, um, temperance, air, air, rest, rest. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> rest and then trust in God. And so. and um. There's other other ones where people incorporate environment because we're mm. starting to see that environment also affects. Like there's a lot of uh, chemicals in a lot of the things that people have in their homes. Mm. The paint that we use, we have to now be careful what paints. And mm. so it can be very stressful having to think about all these things. Yeah, The environment now you know the pollution it it can be stressful having to think it can be about all the things that are causing health issues yeah but we can do things a step at a time yeah and i do believe that too i do believe that we can do things a step at a time i also believe that there are certain things that we just can't control and you just you pray yeah. about it and you know, let God handle the, the situation. Like sometimes, you know, there are chemtrails that we can't control that. And there are chemtrails and it comes down and we're breathing the chemtrails. And what are we going to do? We're going to move <laughs> every time we see the chemtrails? Well, we can't, you know, it's very stressful. And so th those times we, we pray about it because we can't do nothing about it. We can't control it. And so let God handle those things. But the things that we can control we can control the food that we eat, the water that we drink, 
the time we have for exercise and uh and, and things like that so, and, and also temperance trusting in god resting all these things are things that we can control um, but things outside of our control we pray about mm -hmm. so that all for today any more thoughts yeah i just i don't want anyone to feel like we're just giving a, a one Oh, just change your diet and you're going to be okay the thing. There, there are more things to it. Diet is just a part of it. Mm -hmm. And we believe, based on what we've seen, that a lot of people have gotten better mm -hmm. by putting into their bodies the foods and the nutrition that it needs. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. we put in things that isn't meant to be in the body, we've experienced... I've experienced because I experimented on myself that it does cause issues. I mm -hmm. went from meat eating to being to eating organic meat, organic eggs, to then going plant based, to then going raw, mm -hmm. to then going vegan again, to then eating meat again, and then mm -hmm. processed vegan, and then <laughs> cleaner vegan. And now completely plant-based. And so I allowed myself to experiment in that way because I don't just want to say this works because this is what other people say. I want to say this works because I've experienced Experience. it. I've lived it. I, I went vegan meat eater just to see, you know, is it really, is, is it really true that, or is it just all in my mind? I went to eat, I, I eat meat again. I felt horrible. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm never doing this again. I went back to eating clean. And it's just the best I've felt. It's the best that I've experienced. Other people feeling their skin, just, you know, their skin, their energy. Mm -hmm. Everything about them just feels better. And the cleaner you eat, the cleaner you feel. And so we're talking from experience. We're not doctors obviously we just experience yeah. these things and that's why we're sharing it but again it's not just that yeah it's just a part of it mm -hmm. it's a, it, i think it's a big part of it but also the the biggest part of it is just trusting god trusting god's word i think that's also the biggest part of it because if you don't trust in god's word then you're not gonna eat the things that god said you know these, these are the things to eat and so so if there's no more thoughts, then we can pray, and that would be it. Well, that's the end of our SFP podcast. Mm. Cast, cast, so if you want cast. to cast some pods, you can cast them with this us. This is the place to be. You can cast your pods here. <laughs> All right. So for those of you guys who stayed with us during this podcast and stay tuned thank you guys for staying tuned we're going to continue doing this so if you guys like this style this is new to us kind of different you know to us and so we're going to continue doing something like this if you guys want to recommend some topics that we can talk about or some topics that my you want to ask my wife uh, you want her to talk about please do ask, comment those topics in the comment section below. Um, for those of you guys who want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and donating yes. at sfp.center. Link is in the description box below. And also, these things, the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia, this is also in the description box below. All these things do help us keep this ministry afloat. Um, we do this in order to support this family, you know, full time and with this ministry as well. So the support, the donations and things like that, it does help us keep this thing going afloat. So thank you guys for that. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace, Peace and, and avocado grease. No grease. <laughs> grease is Just bad. avocados. Just avocados. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? Thank you for watching this segment of From Hurt to Whole podcast. This is a podcast that my wife and I started in order for us to talk about things in the home like marriage, parenting, mental health issues, how to be a husband, how to be a wife, 
We try to give advice and perspective in order to bless others out there who might be going through the same things that we are going through. If you guys want to support this podcast, please pray for us, pray for this podcast, and you guys can also donate at sfp.center. Link is in the description box below. This is what we do full-time in order to support our family and to keep this ministry afloat. So thank you guys again. Praise God always, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.